Now also God does physical healings when people are slain by the power of God. I was on the island of Barbados and um, I had revealed to me, I said right back over in that area there is someone who has been in a car accident, your collarbone has been broken and there's some other bones that have been broken out of alignment in your body. And I believe God wants to touch you and heal you. Now I could not see any casts on anybody, I wasn't even looking for casts. But what amazed me was this, that a young woman got up from her seat, came up to the front, and by the time she got up very close to the front, I saw underneath her dress collar a cast. And the cast went down also to the, it was partly down her back a bit. And so at that point, you know, you say, man, nothing is impossible with God. If he is revealed, he's obviously wanting to touch it. So I brought her right out into the big circle area because people were all sitting around all over and there was a mass of people there. And I said, now, Lord, just touch this one and heal her for your name's sake that you shall receive the glory and the honor and the praise. And she is slain by the power of God. Now, I observed something strange. I have never seen this before. As I said, I always like to see what's happening. Any strange manifestation that isn't of what I understand is of God, I want to look at it and observe it. And she's laying there on the floor on her back. And I noticed that her arms are kind of jerking like this. And her feet are jerking just like this, and it's sort of kind of a strange jerking manner. And I thought, gee, that's funny. I, I've never seen anything like that before. Hmm. I, you know, I watch it. Because I don't like anything that's not of God, but it wasn't vulgar, it wasn't out of order. I thought, well, we'll just observe it for a few minutes and see what's happening. When the jerking stopped and she laid there in a sense of peace for some time following that, and finally she got up. Do you want to know something? Do you know what God was doing with that woman? He was putting her bones back in alignment again. They were literally being put back into alignment in her shoulders and collarbone. And the woman was a miracle of healing. She took off her braces, was examined and x-rayed, and she was perfectly normal. Now, this is what God does when you're touched by the power of God. Don't tell me that being slain by the power of God is something wrong. It's something beautiful if we are aware of what God is doing. And, of course, another thing that may happen too, maybe we have a certain weakness or a fault in our life. Oftentimes, God deals with this as well at the time. Maybe a month or two months go by and we'll look back and we'll say, you know, hey, I'm not doing that anymore. That weakness has been completely removed from me. And then we can look back and say, you know something? I believe it happened at the time when I was slain by the power of God. I don't remember ever having this again since that time. So oftentimes, even if we are not aware at the moment of what has happened, uh, we can bank on it that God certainly has done something in our lives and we can be sure that he has ministered to us. There are times also when um, the work of God is not fully accomplished with one touch, with one, per one time. I have uh, occasionally been ministering to a person, they are slain by the power of God, and then I will, they will get up again to go back to their seat and I will say, just a minute, honey, just a minute, God's not finished with you yet. To me, God wants to touch that individual another time. And so I will minister to that person again, right then and there, and they, again, they are touched again. Uh, sometimes two people will get up too soon. God still hasn't finished with them. I've seen people wobbling, you know, their strength is still not complete yet, and so they, they and I've seen them even fall down again even after they've gotten up. And um, uh, so I, I believe this, that what we ought to do then is neither get up too early, but also, there are times when God ministers to people twice. I have seen this, again, uh, as we were in the West Indies. It seemed that those that God was going to anoint again for further service, every time I ministered to an individual on two different occasions, I noticed then that that manifestation of people being slain by the power of God followed their ministries. Uh, it's an amazing thing how things are imparted to people. Now, uh, again, not all deliverance is complete. Uh, I have seen that when God touches people and they're slain by the power of God, maybe um, there is still further ministry. Okay, 
And so I'm just going to show you now a very short little segment here of a, of a tape that we had taken earlier of a girl that we ministered to. She was slain by the power of God. But later on, after that particular meeting was over, we spent some time with her, talking with her, ministering to her, and she went through a complete uh, area of deliverance in her life, and she was completely changed because she had been in witchcraft and she needed great deliverance. So oftentimes this being slain by the power of God opens the door for a person then to be delivered. And uh, oftentimes it does take then uh, further counseling following that to finish what God has already begun. Now God is doing his own work when people are being slain. I find something that's amazing that when I have been farther afield in the ministry and working in these places, that God is doing, if I might say, his own thing, okay? There are times when I look at a sea of faces and I say, God, there is no way that un one individual can possibly minister to all of these people. It is utterly impossible. You have to move, God. You have got to touch. You have got to heal. And above all else, out there in the West Indies where they have been, their background is slavery, uh, out there where they have had government upheaval one after another on the islands, many of the people don't know their own blood heritage out there. And to me, the islands were ripe for a special touch from God. And when I saw the great needs, I said, there's no way that Mary Goddard can meet all of those needs. God, you've got to do something. I witnessed something happen and in one of the churches there, I'll never forget the, before the meeting began, I had been praying in the spirit. I felt that God was going to do something that night. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew he was going to do something. One of the priests, who was a very beautiful man on the islands, and he had been to uh, uh, Trinidad about 25 times, I guess, all told. And he had come there to the islands to minister, and now he was going to go back to the island of Karakou again, to where his base was. And um, he was now at the church that night, and um, he was getting ready to leave. And so he had come to say a goodbye while he was there. And I suppose this would be along about 9.30 in the evening, something like that. Um, prior to his uh, little talk, um, we had come to the end of the meeting. We were closing off the meeting to, to finish for the night. And I said, now, there are some new people here in the church tonight. You don't go to church anywhere at all, but you came into the church and you, you wanted to have receive a touch from the Lord, and you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, or you'd like to be filled with the Spirit. Would you like to go into the back room uh, with Babsy and with the other woman that was with me and, uh, and go back there, and they will explain to you how to receive Jesus into your life and how to be filled with the Spirit. And uh, <laughs> Babsy turned to me and she says, Mary, I always wondered what you Pentecostals did in the back room. <laughs> she says, now I know. Anyway, they all went back into the back room, and I remained in the main auditorium with the other people that were still needing some more teaching, and so we carried on. Now this beautiful priest came, and he gave his little farewell address to them and told them how much he loved them, and all oh, these people loved this priest. He was a dedicated man, a dedicated man to his people. And he, was, he came from Ireland. But um, I, I was just getting ready now to lay hands on him, and Babsy came out of the back room. And we laid, they laid hands on this man just to bless him on his way, and that was all we were going to do, just pray with him. And God touched this man, and he was slain by the power of God. Now, everybody in the main auditorium was standing at this point because we were just getting ready to say goodnight. And all over the building, God touched people, and they fell under the power of God all over en masse. It was just like God put his hand down and poof, everybody started falling all over the place. That meeting lasted till 11.30 that night. And God touched everyone right and left. You know what happened? Simultaneously, the people in the back room did not even know what was going on in the main auditorium. And when this man had been touched by God. He was his leader. It was almost like God was saying, listen, I'm going to touch my leader. And when I touch my leader, my people are going to receive a touch too. And in the back room, these people were oblivious to what was happening. And simultaneously, they were slain by the power of God right at the same time. 
and the the person who was with me helping me didn't even they didn't know what was going on <laughs> right while she was talking it's about like the story you know of of peter and paul while they're talking the spirit of god falls you know well these things happen and uh, I have I've witnessed a number of things happening, and, and no person has any power over it. It's something that God is doing by his sovereign will. He is touching his people. He is healing his people. Well, I've got much more to share on this. Come back again next time, will you? And we'll share some more on being slain in the spirit.